This is a duodenal biopsy from a 50-year-old male that presented with abdominal pain. You can see the Brunner's glands on the right. The nodular lesion is present on the left of the image. On closer inspection, the lesional cells have ovoid, monotonous nuclei and copious cytoplasm. The specimen is somewhat fragmented, but there does appear to be a nested architecture. These features are compatible with a neuroendocrine tumor. This is confirmed with synaptophysin immunohistochemistry. The tumor is also positive for chromogranin. The KI67 labeling index is low, overall less than 1%. The findings support the diagnosis of a well-differentiated neuroendocrine tumor, grade 1. These are also referred to as carcinoid tumors. The incidence of carcinoid tumors increases with age, with a mean above 50 years. They are more common in African Americans, with a prevalence that is almost two times that seen in Caucasians. Small bowel carcinoid tumors are more common in men, while gastric carcinoid tumors are more common in women. Less than 10% of patients will develop carcinoid syndrome, with symptoms that include diarrhea and flushing. Functional carcinoid tumors can produce large amounts of hormones, particularly serotonin, which enter the bloodstream and cause the symptoms that are associated with carcinoid syndrome. The symptoms can vary, but they often include flushing of the face and skin, diarrhea, difficulty breathing, and heart palpitations. These symptoms may be triggered by certain foods or activities, including physical exertion or emotional stress. A majority of patients with carcinoid syndrome develop fibrous endocardial thickening of the right heart, which may lead to tricuspid regurgitation and heart failure. Luckily, most patients are asymptomatic. Somatostatin analogs such as octreotide can successfully treat symptoms and even reduce tumor size. Ultimately, prognosis is determined by tumor stage and grade. Grading of neuroendocrine tumors is based on proliferative activity. The traditional approach is to determine the mitotic rate based on 50 high-power fields. Remember, the cell cycle includes the G1 phase, the S phase, the G2 phase, and the mitotic phase. Any of these phases are considered to be cell cycle active. The human eye can only appreciate a subset of the mitotic phase. Thus, mitotic counts have a low sensitivity for determining cell cycle activity. KI67 is an antigen that is expressed during all phases of the active cell cycle. For this reason, KI67 is a much more sensitive marker of cell cycle activity. Generally, it is recommended to use KI67 in the grading of well-differentiated neuroendocrine tumors. Tumors that have a KI67 labeling index of 2% or less are grade 1. Tumors with a KI67 labeling index between 3 to 20% are grade 2. Lastly, tumors with a KI67 labeling index greater than 20% are grade 3. Remember, the distinction between well-differentiated and poorly differentiated neuroendocrine tumors is based on growth pattern. Well-differentiated tumors have a distinct growth pattern, including trabecular and nested features. Poorly differentiated tumors have sheet-like growth, generally with extensive necrosis. Angiolymphatic invasion is frequently present, even in well-differentiated tumors. The majority of carcinoid tumors of the duodenum are non-functional. These non-functional tumors have a better prognosis. Functional tumors may produce gastrin or somatostatin. Those that produce gastrin are often associated with multiple endocrine neoplasia, type 1. Tumors that produce somatostatin may also be associated with multiple endocrine neoplasia, type 1, and with neurofibromatosis, type 1. Remember, gastrin is a hormone that stimulates the release of gastric acid. Also, remember that somatostatin is a hormone that inhibits growth hormone and insulin production. A few final points. Carcinoid tumors in the small bowel have a worse prognosis than those that arise in the stomach or rectum. Within the small bowel, carcinoid tumors that arise in the jejunum or ileum are more likely to be multicentric and metastatic at the time of presentation.